Good morning and welcome to our spring preview online. My name is Nicholas Conlin and I am the Visit Experience Coordinator here at Humboldt State University. I just wanted to say hello, introduce myself, and tell you a little bit about what you're going to expect to see in the videos right after my welcome. So these are in-depth academic tours, which means that we have taken you inside of spaces that you don't normally get to see. And I'm talking about pretty exclusive, unique spaces that students who come to campus for a regular physical tour don't even get to see. We were given the ability and the access to really take you uh, on a unique experience that will show you what you can expect here at Humboldt State. For some of you, you're gonna get to see really uh, cool and unique labs and other places where you can perform experiments and really enhance your academic experience. For others, you're going to see spaces that encourage you to come up with the coolest art project you can think of and be involved in as much musical talent as you can. And then even beyond that, for others, you're gonna see spaces that really encourage you to challenge the way you think and view the world. So we're excited to be able to bring you this content. We hope that you enjoy it. And we want you to know that Humboldt State will be here for you in the fall and that we're not going anywhere. Enjoy. Welcome to Theater, Film, and Dance, where we like to give you the best experience possible, the, even in our old antique um, box office. Here, have a ticket for our next show. Hello everyone and welcome to the Department of Theater, Film, and Dance. Those are three different majors and with one department. We'll start off with theater. Theater actually has a wide range of variety of different things that you can study from being in performance through stage lighting to stage management to becoming makeup and design or where we actually are, costume and design. This entire area is for dedicated for costumes. As you can see, we have a variety of different things and mannequins of all shapes and sizes. We have thread, uh, we have lace, we have actual costumes, and we actually have this really cool costume for Jake Barnell, um, which is actually a military costume for one of the productions that they were gonna do. So have you ever wondered what it is it like to be behind the stage? Let's go see. This is actually one of the many makeup rooms that we actually have. It's actually a really cool class that students could take, whether you're a theater major or a non-theater major. You get to get to learn how to become uh, your own ser like a serpent, makeshift your face, how to contour, how to do stage lighting, which is actually really cool. Each student gets their own little mirror and learns how to do different things. As you can see, they first draw it out and then they practice this on themselves. So they could do from SF, SF makeup to all the way to reptilian to stage to beauty, which is actually really cool. And they have a wide variety of different wigs. So part of the department of film, we actually have very different types of film cages. So we're actually in one of them. This is actually, uh, students could learn how to use different type of equipment from beginner photography to all the way to the events. Have you ever seen those behind the scenes look where they have the crane and they go up and then go down and the camera stays motionless? Yeah, so some of our, some of our students actually get to learn how to use that. The department actually lets students use this for free. So it's actually really cool. And if they wanna work on their own projects, that's it's all allowed. So HSU actually has a world uh, longest going student run film festival and it's and here in Humboldt County and actually it's on its I believe in its sixth year which is actually really cool so some of the hands-on learning opportunities that our students get to do is actually since we are in the middle of the forest it's actually really good uh for different uh scenes so uh movies such as Jurassic Park uh, Star Wars, Salvation Army, they've all been filmed in our uh, forest, which is actually some students get to internship in one of those films. Welcome to our dance department, where we have d different dance rooms all over campus. This is one example of it. Um, it's actually where our ballet classes happen. I am not a ballet dancer, but what you just saw is just a little bit of my four protocol class that I took this semester. But yeah, so as you can see, there's handlebars here because this is where the intro to ballet, to advanced ballet classes here. Downstairs, we also have another dance room, which is for our um, folkloric class and our tap dancing class. 
In all of our campus, we have different classrooms because we want to give the students as best as possible. So right now we're sitting in one of our many music classrooms um, where we hold a lot of different instruments and have tons of different classes. I used to have a jazz orchestra class in this classroom. Um, as you can see over there, we have one of our many grand pianos. Um, on campus, we actually have a total of eight. One of them is in the library and there's another one in one of the residence halls. But our students have the opportunity to use all of these grand pianos and many of the other instruments that are provided by the music department. Students actually have the opportunity to check out instruments completely free of charge for the entire year. Some cool aspects of this room is the fact that uh, all, all of the boards, they have the staffs on them so that you don't have to worry about teachers having really bad handwriting and not being able to draw a straight line. We've done that for them. So right now we're sitting inside of our piano lab where students can take a variety of different classes on the piano. It doesn't look how it normally does right now because we've actually been sending out keyboards to students that wouldn't have a piano to play on otherwise so that they can continue taking their classes at home. Um, so for piano, we teach a variety of different classes, whether it be intro or for music majors. All of our music majors are required to have a certain extent of ability to play the piano, and so we require them to take a certain level of classes. But we also offer classes for non-majors as well, such as intro to piano. So right now we're about to go see one of our many practice rooms that we have on campus. Practice rooms are available for all students. All you have to do is fill out a form to get one of these key cards. They're good for either one semester or one whole academic year. And all you gotta do is just put it in there and you have access to one of these rooms. Each room is equipped with a piano and as well as they also come with a music stand so you have everything you need in order to practice. So right now we're about to enter Fulkerson Recital Hall which is located in Music B, one of our two different music buildings for our music department. Fulkerson Recital Hall seats about 200 people and it is used for a variety of different concerts whether it be orchestra, jazz band, wind ensemble, or even choir. Above us here, we have our recording booth where students are actually hired to record concerts that happen here. Students can go online and actually watch the recording so that their families can also see it if they're not able to make it here in concert. So right now we're standing inside of Music B, which is where our music department is located. And our music major actually has three different focuses. It's performance, vocal, and education. And so those three different focuses actually are taught kind of all over campus, but they're mainly focused here. And they even have a ton of different classes that you can take even as a non-major. So right now we're standing in our music library, which holds all of the music for the music department. Humboldt State University actually has one of the largest collections of chamber music on the West Coast. But we do have a variety of other music for jazz bands, orchestra, and other wind ensembles. This is an example of what one of the cabinets looks like, stuffed with music. So right now we're standing in our music repair shop where both our piano technician and our instrument, te instrument technician are located. Um, so any student can rent an instrument from the music department. Uh, we have a range of different things, both orchestral and band instruments, and they can actually rent completely free of charge. You can either rent an instrument for just a semester or the entire academic year. Um, all work is done on the instruments here. I have a trombone and I came in here to get my slide fixed because I accidentally dropped it and it dented. And even though it's my instrument, they did it completely free and it was super cool rather than having to go find some music shop to get it done. It's right here on campus. You can also rent out things like mutes through the instrument repair shop and you can check out lockers to store your instrument in. Hi, welcome back. This is Art A um, and Art B. We'll be going through these both buildings at the same time. Um, a little bit of Art B actually, actually holds our art major and our art department. So our art department, it actually has a lot of different things that you could do with your art. We have uh, studio art, we have photography, small jewelry, metal, ceramics, anything that you could basically think of, we, you, you could basically major in. Uh, as, well, as we will go down this hall, you'll see a lot of different artworks that our uh, art students did. And at the end of the hall, we'll look at the small juries and metals lab. So as you can see, there's a wide variety on the walls. This is actually the best water fountain on campus because it's nice and cold and crispy. And then over here we have uh, 3D foundations. It's actually really cool. They actually got a 3D uh, 
uh, 3D printing machine, which is actually really cool. And then some of the uh, jewelry work that our students have created. As you can see, there's different levels. This is uh, some of the artwork that our um, beginner jewelry class actually did. And as we go down, this is the most uh, more advanced part. We also have uh, the HSU Jewelry and Small Metal Club, which actually they sell these jewelry, so they actually could go different conventions all over the United States. I believe they just returned um, a f like a few months ago from Portland that, that they competed, and it's actually really cool. Another really awesome part of this department is that each art student gets its own locker where you can put all your locker and art supplies um, and you get assigned. Even if you're not an art student, uh, like an art major, you can still get a locker. You just have to provide your own lock and go to the department itself or for your little name. We also have live um, studio art and sketching. And for those who are not as uh, like, inspired by live art we also have scientific drawing which is actually really awesome down this hall you'll see one of our iconic pieces on campus um this is actually all made of paper mache paint and a bit of glass so this was actually a student it's supposed to represent life to death um and its journey um so it's all made of paper mache and paint which is actually really awesome. Um, when I take little kids in here, it, it's their favorite part. Um, but this is actually the, I wouldn't say the weirdest part, uh, but it's actually the most interesting. The artist was so proud of his piece that it, he wanted to put a piece of him, so he cut up his ponytail and, put, and placed it on display. There's a rumor saying that some students rub it for good luck during finals week. As we make our way to our A, you'll start seeing more of the photography sections. Um, and you can see some of the work over here and some of the ceramics uh, displayed over here. In the first floor of the library, there's actually a felt collection where the students do their favorite fruit in ginormous size. And it's all over in the first floor of campus. Down here, we have a student-run gallery. This gallery is actually very interesting. Um, a student could use this gallery for, the, uh, for about two weeks. Uh, they could do anything to the walls as long as they promise to um, return them back to its original color, which is white. So other students could actually display themselves in their own creative color as well. So as you can see, some of these um, are still around, which is actually really nice. They could rearrange these uh, walls as, as they please. And if we go down here, we'll see more of the photography class. So some of, um, of these is actually the photo room. Which, which is actually really cool. Another part of our art department that's actually really awesome is that if you don't have a, a photography camera, they lend it to you for free. So if you don't have to spend thousands of dollars for a good quality camera when the department actually gives it for you. It's just really nice. Alrighty, so hello, my name is Blue. I'm from Palmdale, if y'all know where that is, it's nowhere in Southern California. Um, I am a communication and psychology major in my junior year here at HSU. Um, so that's enough about me. Let's get started. This building up here is Founders Hall. Founders Hall was the first building that was established within the campus. This actually used to be an all girls teaching school. And so the graduating class was about 42 females. But since then we've grown quite a bit. Uh, we have a couple majors in here, anything ranging from English, politics, history, to world languages and international studies. Um, with that all being said, let's take a closer look. Well, that was a lot of stairs, but we made it. Interestingly enough, HSU has more stairs than students, and we like to joke about it all the time. We like to call the university Hill Stairs and Umbrellas. But with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to some things that are inside of Founders Hall. So I kind of already talked to you guys about some of the majors that are in here, like English, history, politics, um, geospatial is in here as well. Oh, uh, Building as well because it's so old 
Um, so there's a lot of different things to see in here. You can actually see in some of the places where uh, the dorms used to be for dormitories and stuff like that, which is really cool. And as you can see, a lot of our on-campus events uh, do a lot of publicity, and so there's always something going on on campus, which is really helpful for a lot of students that uh, are moving far away from home. So here we have our English and Religious Studies department. Um, within our English department, we have a magazine called Toy On, where a lot of our English majors tend to flock because they want to have semi-professional programs. And we will take a look at the Toy On Lab a little bit later, but there are quite a few things that you can do within the Toy On Lab. Within English in general, you can do quite a bit of things as well. You can work with the El Lineador or Lumberjack newspapers. Uh, you can also have a double major in journalism, which is something that a lot of different English majors do. You can take creative writing. You can do quite a number of things. So this is our toy on lab. It's a huge part of our English department. So let's go ahead and take a look. Um, in here, you can apply for a number of different positions um, because Toyon is a student-run magazine. It's a semi-professional uh, program, and so different positions like editor-in-chief and publishers and all of that kind of stuff would be something that you could do within here if you are interested in doing something like that in the future. Uh, the English department does provide that, which is really cool as well. Um, it seems like these individuals have a pretty close bond, which is really cool as well because they all have to work in this close space. So here we are outside of the journalism department or Bret Hart House as we know it. Let's go ahead and take a look inside. So as you can see, this has a pretty cozy feel. Um, our journalism department is always looking for more people. So if you're somebody that's just interested in illustration and you're an art major, you can totally do that for newspapers like The Lumberjack, El Lineador, and even The Offspray newspaper. Uh, so you can actually get your stuff published and you can write articles and all of that kind of stuff um, for all of these different newspapers that we have here on campus. This is where all the magic actually happens. You'll, if you look around, you'll see a lot of equipment that students use to produce the paper. A lot of the times before um, publication day, you'll see people here until like midnight trying to get things done. And that just shows the passion and really how invested students are um, in everything that they do. So this is where the Lumberjack and El Leñador both get everything done. Now, we're in one of just several computer labs accessible on campus for students. All of these computers have Adobe software and the Creative Cloud software, so nev you never have to worry about having to purchase these kinds of things. They're available for you, and you'll definitely use these softwares to create a lot of the content in this major. Super cool. This is our media production room, and in here, not just journalism students use it. A lot of different majors come in here to bring life to any and all projects that they might have. Personally, in one of my communication classes last uh, semester, in my capstone class, we um, recorded one of our most favorite papers, and this is where it all happened. So as a, journalism, as a journalism student, you have the opportunity to work with real equipment and actual equipment that helps you out in your uh, professional career, which I think is pretty cool. This is KRFH. It's our student studio radio station. Uh, a lot of our journalism students get the chance to take a radio class that lets them literally go live on air and can be heard all throughout Humboldt County. Now, we, we do get a lot of students outside of the journalism department taking this class, and that's, that's something that you can do. Um, but this is a really cool space to jam out. At the end of the hall back there, we have a soundproof room where sometimes we have live DJs actually performing, um, sometimes bands perform too. So it's really a cool space that brings a lot of different disciplines together. Hello, so here we are outside of our Talonaker house or communication department as many of us know it. Um, let's go ahead and take a look inside. 
All right, so in here is our Telonicer house or our communication department. Within this room, we have our forensic squad room, which is usually used for our speech and debate team, but it can also be used for other communication uh, wizards, which are actually like communication tutors. And so you could actually apply to become a communication wizard, which is really cool. Um, in addition to that, our staff that are communication um, staff members, they have their office hours in here. So this whole building is full of different um, rooms where these individuals have their office hours. So if you didn't know anything about HSU speech and debate, we won quite a bit of awards. As you can see, this isn't even all of our awards. We actually have some other awards in our attic, but uh, we do try really hard to be competitive and nationally competitive. And so this is really important to us. Hey everyone, my name is Omar Olaya. I'm a senior here at Humboldt State University and my major is math education. Uh, right now, where we're currently outside is the Behavioral and Social Sciences Building, or the BSS, where the majority of the, of the majors inside of the arts, humanities, and social sciences are located. All right, so now I'm excited to sign the building and go to the fifth floor. For students majoring in critical race, gender, and sexuality studies, students have the opportunity to, uh, to have an emphasis in ethnic studies, multicultural queer studies, and women's studies, as well as having the opportunity to join different clubs here on campus. And uh, for an example, uh, one of those clubs uh, could be involved with uh, social justice uh, here on campus and helping students as well as the community here at HSU uh, get more involved. For students interested in our philosophy department, they could either uh, get a major or a minor in the department. And with the courses that we have here at HSU, students have the opportunity to take a wide variety of different classes with different subjects and have a better uh, way to expand the way that they think as well as have more of an idea of how people around the world actually think and view things. So we're outside of the Department of Sociology. So right now let's go inside and let get a closer look at the major. So students in the Sociology Department have opportunities to do research and data analytics and qualitative reasoning which offer and give very good transferable skills for another major here on campus. So the offices for the professors in each department are always located on the other side or so in the opposite hallway and student uh, professors here at HSU are very involved in the classes that their students are currently in and as well as the research that their students are doing as well and are definitely more than happy to actually help our students with their research and actually put an input that could help them out and what that research can actually be used for. Here we have the Department of History and Politics and International Studies. We can go ahead and go inside. Um, in here you can find a variety of different opportunities. For example, in our history department, we have a lot of hands-on research that you can do with different professors, um, depending on what you're really trying to focus on. There are a plenty of professors here that will know what you're trying to study and actually help you with your research, which is really cool. As far as your politics goes, you can actually work with council members within Humboldt County, which is really cool because you get that hands-on experience, which not only looks good on a resume, it also like helps push you further within society, which is cool as well. Um, as far as religious studies goes, we have uh, a lot of different religions to study because our religious studies department does pair up with our history department sometimes and so uh, different uh, religions that aren't necessarily practiced anymore you can still get a lot of that information as well. And then international studies, we actually make it mandatory for individuals that have international studies majors to travel abroad so you get that hands-on experience as well. So another cool thing about HSU is the fact that, as you can see, these are professors' offices and over there are the classrooms in which they teach in. Something cool about that is you get a lot more interpersonal connection with your professors because they're so close in proximity, as well as because you have such small classes and so much hands-on work at HSU. So here we have Founders Hall 118, which is actually the largest lecture hall on campus. Um, you'll see 
that it seats about 180 people, which isn't very large for a college, I know. But again, it's really cool because you get to have that interpersonal connection and a lot of that hands-on work with your professors and group work with your uh, other students, which is really cool as well. So here I am standing outside of the Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Um, within our geography major, we actually have quite a bit of students that have won awards and a lot of professors, uh, especially the heads of the departments that have won a lot of awards as well. Within geography, you'll be focusing more on like cartography and maps and stuff like that. Um, and then there's environmental studies where you would be focusing more on the social aspect and how humans actually um, contribute to different things within the environment. Um, and so environmental studies and, envi and geography are very similar, but they do have a lot of differences. And I think that um, talking to professors and actually figuring out what you actually want to do and what you're interested in will tell you which major you'd be more better at. We're inside of the anthropology collections room. And here, as you can see, we do have a lot of the uh, research and work that students have done here at HSU. Over here on the side, we have some sample work from research projects that students have done here at Humboldt State University. And uh, this just shows that students have a lot of hands-on learning opportunities here at HSU. We're outside of the Department of Native American Studies and World Languages and Cultures, as well as Critical Race, Gender, and Sexuality Studies. So let's go inside. For the Department of Native American Studies, here at HSU, we were actually the very first CSU to actually offer a bachelor's uh, major in that department. For world languages and cultures, students have the opportunity to get a major in either Spanish or French, and they could get a minor in German, Spanish, French, as well as Chinese, and have the opportunity to study abroad at the country of uh, the language that they're learning. 